line following challenge is made up of four different divisions. Elementary, year five, middle school, year six to eight, and high school, year nine to 12. The following requirements must be met for your robot to enter. The robot must demonstrate that it can follow a line, that it can stop upon reaching the tower, but you don't have to demonstrate that you can deliver a ball. Multiple sensors and processors are allowed. The volume of your robot should not exceed 65,030 cubic centimetres. Your robot will have three minutes to complete all tasks. A line following program must control your robot's motion at all times. Only players can operate and manipulate the robot during runs. Remember, players play, coaches coach, and parents cheer. All divisions use the same 20 centimeter tall by 10 centimeter wide and 35 centimeter long tower. The tower has a 10 by 10 centimeter opening at the top and an open back to allow the balls to roll out. The tower is held firmly with Velcro. The tower cannot be touched by any person during payload delivery. This means that players or the ref will not be able to scoop balls out. Touching the robot at any time will require the player to pick the robot up and return to home. Players are allowed to position their robot so their colour sensors are facing over the black home line. The track is different depending on the age bracket you are competing in. Elementary features a 1.25 centimetre black line with no intersections. Middle school features the same 1.25 centimetre black line. However, it will have one intersection. That intersection could be different from different mats, so that students won't know until the day. High school features a smaller 0.75 centimetre line and two random intersections. Players position their robot with their colour sensors over the black home line. Your overall score is determined from points earned from the following conditions. In the middle school category, robots will gain 25 points for leaving home. They will gain a further 25 points when they turn at an intersection. They will then gain 100 points when they stop at the tower. Players will score an additional 100 points when their robot delivers a ping pong ball into the tower. From there, robots will need to reacquire the line. They'll gain 25 points for doing that. And then they will need to return back home and they will receive an additional 25 points when they turn again at the intersection. Players will receive their final points when they return their robot to home position. Home position is color sensors positioned over the black line. At this point, players would reposition their robot and they would fill their robot with bonus balls. Depending on the division will depend on the amount of bonus balls available. For RoboRaid Australia, the following bonus ball limits have been set. For elementary and middle school, we are looking at 125 bonus balls, and for high school, we have set it at 200. In the event of a tiebreaker, the robot or team that has scored the most amount of bonus balls in the shortest amount of time will be deemed the winner. The top eight teams will proceed forward into the final tournament. From there, they will take place in a knockout competition. The official rules can be found at the RoboRave International.org website in a PDF format. We hope you found this video informative and we can't wait to see you all at RoboRave Australia.